Welcome to Film Analysis. This is Jeffrey Masca. Today we'll look at neoliberalism and the national myth of a cowboy in the cowboy trucker cycle. Oh yeah, 10-4, big pen for sure, for sure. By golly, it's clean, clear to Flagtown, come on. From the thrilling pages of life rides a man you must fear and respect. A man whose uncomfortable will... Cowboy is the West's most recognizable icon, and as such is a sensitive cultural barometer and changes in transformation to this image often signify important reiterations and redefinitions to the society at large. I see the cowboy trucker as a variation of the urban cowboy, which began to appear in the post-World War II era and accelerated in the late 60s and 70s. The emergence of the urban cowboy coincides with revisionist Western that begins to question these basic assumptions about Western mythology and its relation to United States history. At this point, we start seeing more examples of the cowboy persona migrating into other genres. To fully examine the variations and changes that have occurred to the Western and the cowboy icon since this period is beyond the scope of the project here today, but suffice to say it's quite interesting and intriguing uh, how these changes and variations have occurred since then. The cycle itself started in the early 70s and lasted into the early 80s and was started off by the film Convoy, which was based on a popular country and western hit, White Line Fever. The Great Smoky Roadblock and the Chuck Norris entry Breaker Breaker are some other uh, examples. And of course, Smoking the Bandit, which is probably the most well known and most popular of the cycle. These films differ from earlier representations by the use of a cowboy outlaw trucker construction that is tightly linked to the labor unrest of this period via the CB or the Citizens Band Radio. Importantly, the CB becomes this icon for the individualism which underwrites the neoliberalism of this period. There were trucker films that predated the cowboy trucker. They Drive by Night and Thieves Highway are some notable examples. And the difference between these films and the later trucking films are significant in their approaches to issues that surround labor and worker exploitation. Earlier films, the truckers are linked to dock and factory workers, and this is seen visually through the mise-en-scene of film noir. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about these characteristics and how they're affected by neoliberalism. <laughs>